botanical garden in Wiesbaden. This botanical garden is very well known to uh, botanic uh, interested people all over the world because we have a lot of plants and trees growing in this garden which normally shouldn't be growing so far north. These platanus, for example, the big trees here, in Europe you find them everywhere, in the southern Europe and so on, they're everywhere. In Sweden, absolutely the southern part of Sweden and Gotha. Uh, this botanical garden was founded by a group of people, men, uh, that called themselves the Badering Friends. They found, uh, they made up a small, uh, well, group for themselves beginning of the 19th century. They started with something so stupid as to swim in the sea, because they didn't do that at that time. And uh, that's why they called themselves the Badering Friends. Um, uh, they all were born to money, and uh, they had, uh, well, a lot of money, and when they grow, grew older, they had even more money. So then they said, okay, we'll do something for these for the city where we were grown up, where we grew up. And they made this garden. And they started around, around uh, 1850, they started with the first parts of the garden. The first tree, one of the first trees they planted here was the apple tree, which we have here in the middle. Uh, that was planted in 1855. And it's a local variety of apple, uh, Stenshirka apple. The mother tree uh, was standing at the parish uh, uh, north of East and uh, they took here uh, uh, one small plant and, and uh, they planted it here and got this tree out of it. This tree has been flowering and giving apples every, every year since 1855. Well, maybe not the first years, but after that. Uh, a couple of years ago we had a storm coming and uh, then it broke apart and uh, the gardeners in here thought that, uh oh, that was it with the tree. So they planted a new tree, the same variety, behind. Mm. But as you can see, the apple tree has come back again and it's still growing and giving fruit every year. Why can it be that we have such, uh, well, big trees which shouldn't be growing so far north and so on? It's a climate. You have to imagine that the Baltic Sea is like a big battery. In the summer it gets warm and water which has get gotten warm, it takes a long time to cool it down again. And this garden especially is very close to the sea. We just have a wall and then the sea straight outside. Which means that the warm water gives a lot of warmth into this garden. Also humidity. And the winters, I got a question, do we have long and hard winters? No, we don't. Due to the Baltic Sea, the winter, if we get a winter, normally comes in end of January, beginning of February, when the Baltic Sea has really cooled down. And then normally in March or April, everything is gone again, the snow is gone. Normally, we have the snow two, three weeks, that's it. Not longer than that. And it's also due to the Baltic, due to the water the whole time. Of course, then the months in, in springtime could be a little bit cooler because the Baltic is still cool. But the summer, it's okay, especially from mid-July and onwards, when the Baltic normally has around 20, 22 centigrades. You can go swimming in the Baltic within, in the summer without no problem. And now, I don't know, maybe 16, 17 centigrades at the moment in the water. And this, of course, gives still the warmth to the island. <coughs> we continue. Uh, Chestnut. No, not chestnut. But it's a nut. No, no. Walnut. Walnut. Sure. Also, walnuts shouldn't be growing in Gotham. We're far too north for that. But here on the island, many, many uh, farm, farmers outside the city as well, they have their own walnut tree in, the, in their farm. Walnuts were very important for the farmers because they could use them in the winter for, for food and so on. So very, very many farms have their own walnut trees. Uh, here in this area, there were no buildings in the middle of the park, just an open area, probably some small fields or something like that. And then in the maybe, I don't know, 16th, 17th century, there were people moving here, but there were just small wooden huts and so on, slum, more or less. And then these people bought the area, and uh, the other people got other houses. So, uh, they didn't throw any out, they, they, get, they got another place to live. Uh, this stone pillar 
is one of the last remains of the wine house. You have to imagine that the wine house which I was talking about, the city hall, had pillars like this on both sides of it. So it must have been a quite imposing building. They were finding this, they found this in the, these, uh, this garden which I showed around 100 years ago. They were doing some excavation work there and they found this, this pillar in there. And that's one of the last remains that put it up here in the garden. Now we are slowly coming to the end of the garden. Okay, it's much, much bigger, of course, because we don't have time to go through the whole garden today. So we'll just walk through, more or less. But we are coming through the rosarium of the garden now. In the rosarium here, they have some 70 or 80 different species of roses. They are changing the roses each and every year, so that they are not always the same roses standing there. But they're trying the whole time to keep old varieties of roses, which you are not normally, you can't find them anyway today and buy them. So they try to keep the old varieties the whole time going. They are always breeding them specially and taking special care of the old varieties. Uh, the flowers are normally starting here to flower, well, end of June, normally middle end of June, the first ones. And then they continue now to flower. And if we get a nice warm uh, fall, we will have flowers here also in Christmas time. Mm -hmm. wow. Very open, due to the climate again, uh, the roses are flowering into December. I have roses at home in my garden as well, and we vary very often. Last year, for example, we could, we could keep roses from the garden and put on the Christmas table. Mm. Mm. So, now you have a little bit about the climate. You asked before. Yeah. Uh, we walk through, the bus is out there, and there is also here the possibility to find a rest house, a toilet. And if, we, if you walk through the Rosarium and then up to the right, there is a small blue hut. There is the toilet. And then, let's say like this, we'll try to uh, continue from here in uh, a quarter to ten. Uh, I have two, three minutes past uh, 22, 20, no, 28, 27 too. Something like that.